This channel is meant for viewers of the age of 21 and older. If you are under the age of 21, I caution you at this point because the United States government has passed a Tobacco 21 law to make it illegal for anyone under the age of 21 to actually view this. So, fuck them. This channel also contains adult language. Hence the parental advisory at the beginning of this video. So if you don't like cussing, get the fuck on. And finally, this channel is not a sales-based channel whatsoever. I am not a business. I am a private hobby-based product reviewer. I don't care if a product succeeds, fails, sits in the middle. Not my problem. I'm here simply to help the viewers make positive decisions and what they're going to spend their money on. I don't give a shit about sales. Y'all have a good one. Well, what's going on, folks? I am Jared the Vaping Goat. And as a man of my word, I said that if a company sent me stuff, I would review it. No more vlogs, no more stuff like that. I got another channel for that. I got my gaming channel and all that. But if a company is stand up enough to send me product, I will absolutely be stand up enough to actually review the product and do as I always do and just give my opinion. So we are here to look at the next iteration of this big son of a bitch. Steam Crave Aromamizer Titan. Now this is now considered the version one, right? Let's just look, okay? Juice flow control where the, uh, the large knurling is. You can see the little lock mark there and unlock. Sorry, unlock here. I'm sorry, unlock here, lock here. I'm all backwards. Juice flow control is that ribbing right there. You can see your airflow with a couple of different size ports. 28 mil configuration in its tall, 18 mil in its short, or you can put it in RDA mode, which personally never found love for that. So now we go to <laughs> the Steam Crave Aroma Miser Titan version one point or version two. Sorry, not 1.5, version two. 1.5 Titan is the mod. What we're into here is airflow exactly, and I do mean exactly, like the Steam Crave Aromamizer Plus V2. So you got three rows of honeycomb, two rows, and then a single. Now the two and the single, in my personal opinion, are meant more for the mesh, uh, just to really kind of restrict that down to get more flavor to where this is versatile enough that you can really kind of get the adjustment that you want because there's a big gap right here for you really kind of fine tune the the three and that really comes into a play for something very important okay now i'm not going to do any table cams but i am going to show you how i have mine built okay um this tank this exact tank had this flavor in it which is a new york style strawberry cheesecake um yeah i'm gonna tell you right now surprised with the v2 very 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 surprised so i'm gonna flip this bad boy over i'm gonna take her apart well here actually you know what before i take it apart let's look at the differences aside from the airflow ragnar drip tip okay 32 mils yeah 32 mils in big boy configuration and fuck me i'm kind of stupid <clears throat> Ah, because I always forget to, you know, like, it's not even a matter of forgetting, truthfully. It's just a matter of, I don't give a shit enough to look at the, uh, to, <laughs> to look at the stuff. <laughs> Call me lazy, man. I don't care. Uh, whatever. Whatever. Oh, God. Let's see here. <sighs> Motherfuck, it is hot as balls up in this bitch. Man. Well, that doesn't tell me. Guess we're going to the book. Because I am ill-prepared as fuck, like always. I mean, at this point, honestly, would we expect... Oh, please shit, all the glass stayed behind. <laughs> oh, would we expect anything less from me at this point? Seriously. Okay. 20 mil. So 20 mil in the 
stubby glass, okay? Just like the Aromizer Plus V2. Got this stumpy little glass, which is a 20 mil configuration. Not too fucking shabby. Uh, the other one was 18, so you're only talking a couple of mils. But in the big boy, in the big boy, just because I know people love questioning what the fuck I say about capacities. And you know what? Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. That's fine. That's fine. 20 mil spare, 32 mil long chimney, 32 mil long glass. It's 32 mils. It's a lot of fucking juice, by the way. So anyway, 32 mil capacity, Ragnar drip tip, knurling at the top, knurling at the bottom. Knurling at the top is for the fill cap, knurling at the bottom is obviously to take the base off. Juice flow control is now up, just like the Aromizer Plus V2. You can see the lock and the unlock there. Um, obviously, vape band, nothing really groundbreakingly different okay as far as the overall changes like nothing has changed from the designs from the aroma miser plus v2 okay and i really didn't think that it would truth be told a lot of people were assuming it was going to be like this the ragnar 25 mil capacity 35 millimeter tank here with a bottom airflow not so much I truthfully did not see them taking the Titan to a bottom airflow configuration with the way the deck is designed. They like being able to do that whole Lego deck and the, the series block and everything else. And if you put a bottom airflow in there, it's really going to potentially fuck with that. So kind of takes away from what the Titan has always been known for. So let's take this thing out because honestly, I've had a lot of questions. What are the differences? What are the differences? So I'm going to do this on camera because I don't want anybody questioning and I'm fucking full of shit on this. I don't know what the hell this cotton looks like. I'm going to tell you that right now. I thought this thing just stripped on me. Ah, not bad. Not terrible. I've been vaping the fuck out of this thing. So, there's your build deck. Oh my god, it is dripping. <laughs> I did just take it out of a fucking full tank, so. Alright, let's get some... uh paper towelage underneath this thing so it's not driven on my fucking headset or my controller or some shit. Okay, so there's your build deck. You can see my height there, okay? Let's change my focusy thingy here just a touch. There we go. You can see my height. This is about how high I put my original Titan. Now these are four millimeter coils and from the center of the block, okay? And I have to emphasize this, okay? From the center of this block, you see how it's got the little notch right there at the bottom, in between where the coils go in, there's that little center notch, okay? Three millimeters off the deck. Four millimeter coils. And these are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So it's a dual eight wrap quad core nichrome 80 fuse clapton and it ohms out i believe at a 0.25 yeah three millimeters off the deck here's the funny thing loosely wrapped three and a half millimeter leg links no bullshit now here is the kicker here's the thing that everybody wanted to know because there was a big 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 problem with this bad boy wicking it okay if you didn't know how to wick, it was a problem because there was no real clear cut, concise way to do it. Unless you went back and watched reviews other than just set the fucking cotton on the deck and either have leaking problems, dry hit problems or flavor for days. That was literally the only three ways. There was no slightly muted flavor or occasional weeping. It was either you would lose 28 mils of fucking juice like that, or you would get dry hits like a motherfucker or it was flavor. I mean, just one of those three. There was no in between. And the reason being is because there was no concise space to place your cotton. It was just kind of one of those you were expected to know. Okay. So that being said, let's lift my cotton. Because first of all, I want you to see exactly where I cut it. Because that's the thing a lot of people don't understand. Okay. Is like where I cut my cotton. Because seeing it from above is a little deceptive. I cut my cotton just above the O-ring. Okay. See that? Even slightly angled and kind of choppy looking. I cut my cotton above the O-ring, but then when I fluff my cotton up, I cut the whole bottom side of the cotton clean the fuck out. See that little kind of notch to it? So that's 
step one, okay? Fluff your cotton up, cut the whole bottom end of that shit off, and then cut it just above the O-ring. But the beauty, the absolute beauty of this is that, not for me so much because I know how to wick the fucking Titan, but the absolute 100% beauty is that this thing just became super user-friendly with the new deck. And yes, the old deck is, compar is compatible with the new deck. But here is the beauty. There's actually a wicking port there. There's a little wall in there, you see it? A little wall in there. It actually tells you right where to put the cotton. And a juice port, from what I can tell, is just a touch bigger. Not much. Now the one thing I will always tell everybody is that when you set your cotton, just place it. This is definitely a damn method style tank. You do not want to fucking just stuff this shit because yes, you will still get muted flavor. Now the kicker is that once you place your cotton, okay, you have to go back through and look at these ports and make sure that the cotton is not protruding through the ports whatsoever. Okay, if the cotton is protruding through the ports, it's going to be a bad vape all fucking day long. Because it's just going to be, sorry for the repeated mic bumps there, it's just going to be kind of not getting the juice flow that you would expect. Now, doing it this way, doing it true damn method, only placing the cotton over the ports is going to come at a cost, and I, we will go over that in just a moment. It really is. There's one other super cool factor that I do want to go over, and I need to turn the juice flow control off and get this fucking juice off my hands really quick. Um, super, super cool factor that I love. God, me and this fucking microphone. I swear I'm moving it, okay? Fuck it if you see it, I'm moving it. I'm just going to keep beating on it otherwise. So, turn juice flow control off. And then let's pop the top because this is fucking amaze balls. <laughs> May not seem like it to some. And it's going to be hard to do. You know what? Actually, here, I'm just going to adjust the camera down. Look at the fucking juice ports on this thing. Like, holy fuck balls. Four gigantic fill ports. Yeah. Like, I don't even keep the top cap on my juice bottle when I'm filling up any of my Titans anyway. I just take them off. It's because you're just pouring for days. And especially when you have 32 mils of capacity. Yeah, there. You got to be some sort of strange stickler for punishment to actually leave it like that. Okay, 0.25. Exactly what I thought. Exactly what I thought. Exactly. Whoa, that was... This is the wrong button. What is this motherfucker doing? There. Jesus. Fuck me. <laughs> God damn this thing. So, um, yeah, let's see what she's reading out at. And my cat's screaming in the background. Stand by. So yeah, 0.25, 6 volts, 144 watts. Now I do want to give a big ass thank you to Steam Crave. I was actually trying to joke with them about, um, they asked me if I still had this mod, Titan version 1.5. I jokingly said, of course I'd take another one, but yes, I still have this one. Massive smart asses. They sent me another one <laughs> to match the tank. I just asked them if I could get a stainless tank because honestly, I wanted to 100% both by finish, by function, everything. I wanted it to be exactly the same as the one that I got from them last time when I got the mesh deck to fully compare tank to tank to tank, right? Now, one last thing. Tank size to tank size. For only having a two mil difference, as far as overall, you know, juice capacity, I find that highly amazing. Or I'm sorry, four mils. Four mils of juice capacity, and this thing's literally two millimeters taller. That's fucking amaze balls to me, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. So, here comes function, okay? Juice flow control is oh, good. I get this one wicked a little bit like, what the fucking ball sack is going on with this? There we go. I do have this Titan wicked a little lighter than I wanted to, so it's a little juicy of a hit, but this is uh, 6.5 volts, 0.29. So, uh, 
Uh, let's find the right focus, stupid. 146 watts, right? 144 watts. Two watts close enough, right? Two watts, 0.4 or 0 0.04 variance between the two tanks. Close enough. So we're going to do wide open airflow on both. Basically 145 watts. We'll just meet in the middle on that. Here's the old tank. Wide open. Like I said when I first fucking reviewed this tank, for its size, it's absolutely an amazing fucking mind-blowing vape. It really is. It's, it's totally not what you would expect. You would expect muted flavor, lots of clouds, and tons of airflow. And it's actually a slightly, and I do, I want to be 100% clear, it is slightly restricted because of that little bit of honeycomb in there to help smooth the airflow out. If it was an open port, I would say it would be like breathing. It's one step from being like breathing. Okay, V1. Lots of clouds. Very flavorful. And you guys just heard it. Here's the V2. Wide open airflow, 0.25, 144 watts. There's more flavor. And the coil height is like I, I had to use my screwdriver because when I measure my coil height, I literally use these little coil master screwdrivers and I use each step as my measuring tool. Okay. Jesus Christ, I gotta turn a fan on. It's cloudy as shit up in this bitch. So I'm sorry if you hear that, but I need some kind of airflow. It's like a motherfucking fog in front of my camera. So anyway, yeah. It's more quiet. It's smooth, fucking smooth airflow. Okay. We'll go to the stainless. Exactly the same fucking tank. Okay. Just V1 to V2. Here's the V1. Obviously, no power. Right? V2. That's drawing even harder. <laughs> That was a hard pull. Like, sparkles kind of hard. So I'm going to put out what my concerns were before I got the tank. Okay. And as per usual, I'm not on a time clock here. I'm not on a schedule here. So if you don't like how long the video is, fuck off. Okay. I like to be thorough. My concerns... A lot of people complained with the V1 about the juice flow control location. They said it was too easy to move the airflow around, blah, 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 blah. Um, that was a big complaint that I heard. That and it didn't leave enough of a reservoir in the bottom of the tank. That was one that broke my fucking head. Like you've got this much juice sitting above that juice flow, but you actually want more of a reservoir below. So if you lightly wick the fucking thing and you tip it, it's going to leak like a bitch, right? Juice flow control all the way down at the bottom limits to where there's only about a two mil, maybe three mil reservoir at the bottom. So out of that 28 mils, you know, two or three of that's at the bottom. This motherfucker, <laughs> it's got a lot in the bottom. <laughs> You're talking the height of the glass. Let me find my glass. There it is. So this is 20. Okay. And just that other little bit makes it 32. So that means there's an additional 12 mils above that. Basically almost double the height of the glass. Close to. Probably about two-thirds the height with this one. So yeah, you figure the bottom reservoir, roughly 12 mils. Rough ballpark. 10 or 12. It's a lot of juice. So if you lightly wick and tip it. It's a huge concern that I had. Huge concern. Because I like to lightly wick my Titans to get the maximized flavor that I can without flooding the fucking tank. I 
another concern that I had initially when I first saw the release pictures for it is that it looked like it had, because all you had was like this view and then you could just vaguely see the airflow to the other side. So it made it look like it had the old airflow design, which was, you know, the big and little slot, and then the new airflow design, which is the triple row. Now, since obviously getting one, you realize it's one, two, three, just like the Aero Miser Plus V2. Concern number two. Concern number three was, was I going to have to completely relearn how to rebuild on the Titan? Because I have five Titans now. Obviously, one is parked at the moment, but I have five Titans in total. I've got two stainless steel, two gunmetal, one black. Okay. I love this fucking tank. I love both of them. I'll tell you that right now. Spoiler alert. I love them both. But I had a big, big, big concern. <clears throat> excuse me. That it was... I was going to have to relearn it because with the Aromizer Plus V2 compared to the Aromizer Plus V1, there is a difference in build. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Even with the Ragnar, there is a difference in build that you normally would kind of go away from in certain ways. Personally, and with my experience, the, the Titan vapes so much better with your coils at least three millimeters off the deck. Okay. The original Titan. If you pancake them down, your flavor mutes out a little bit. Not enough to make it a bad thing, but your flavor does mute out just a little bit. When you raise them up, you give more of an indirect bottom airflow and a fuck ton of flavor, okay? My concern was is that with the Aromizer Plus V2, the way the airflow design changed from the V1 to the V2, it actually came at the cost of needing to pancake the coils down to get the proper flavor. Because when you raised them up, it actually became a little bit more turbulent. Not bad, very good tank. I've got mine upstairs. Um, not bad, but it just basically had to build backwards. So I was concerned that, man, am I gonna have to completely relearn how to build just this one tank out of the other four that I have and keep it in my memory? Fuck man, I'm so used to building this way. If I build the wrong way, is it gonna be turbulent or is it gonna be weird? And no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Not in any fucking way, shape, or form. Um, I built this exactly the way that I build the normal V1 Titan, and it vapes better. It does. So, cons and pros. Uh, con number one for me is it will fall back again and again and again to one very simple, stupid, aesthetic thing. And this is simply just my preference, okay? Um, the drip tip. There's a lot of people that like this drip tip. That Ragnar drip tip, nice big wide bore steel looking thing. Nope. Nope, can't do it. Nope, 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 nope. I don't like this drip tip. There's a big reason why, okay? Because I loosely wick, you do run the occasional hiccup of getting a little spit back. Okay, once in a blue fucking moon, you will get a little bit of spit back, okay? especially if you've had it tipped or anything like that. And one problem you get is you get a bunch of juice that sits up on top of this fucking wide ass edge. And it just bugs the shit out of me. I don't think the drip tip looks bad at all. I actually I think it looks fucking phenomenal. And with other tanks, I'm totally fine with it. But with something that I lightly wick that does give the potential once in a blue moon for spit back aesthetically it just doesn't work for me because then i go to draw do another draw and i might have juice sitting on a fucking drip, drip tip and i'm like hey or you'd be all half awake and drooling or some shit you know and just bleh. just saying it's a thing okay for me i like a more standard thin edged wide bore okay that's actually the drip tip off the bulk It's aesthetics, guys. Drip tips or drip tips or drip tips. This thing will take O-ring style. The tolerance with this O-ring is so much better than a V1 that it will take an O-ring style drip tip, which is the norm for the V1, or it will take a standard goon style smooth. It fits that fucking tight. Smooth 810. And it fits fucking tight as fuck. Okay? So bonus there on that but i just personally don't like the drip tip um problem number two is the juice flow control location just like i said with the aromizer plus v2 uh just like i said with this little guy the supreme v3 okay 
Yeah, I still vape the fuck out of this tank. It's an amazing little 25 millimeter tank. I do run it in dual coil at a whopping 80 watts, but yeah, it's a fucking banging tank. So, um, and just like with the Ragnar, you leave a lot of reservoir underneath. So if you're like me and you wick lightly to get as much optimized flavor as possible, the juice flow control being that high for me is a slightly problematic issue because you really, really, really have to be attentive to the fact that you can't just leave your shit laying around. Okay, you can't just tip it the fuck over. Now, if you're all right with wicking just a little heavier, you probably won't have too many problems, but I can't guarantee that because I'm not, you know, like I've overwicked, I've underwicked, I've done my usual thing. I've, I've made a mess with this fucking tank and flooded it and everything else. Um, and I can say that I've gotten a slight bit of leakage overwicked when it's been tipped. And then like where my normal wicking is, yeah, it'll leak like a bitch if you leave it on its side, which if you're leaving a big ass tank like this on its side, I don't know what the fuck you're doing with your life. I'm just saying. <laughs> I just I, I don't know what to tell you. It's not what it's meant for. That's a lot of juice to sit on a little bit of cotton. Okay. I mean common sense is common sense. So it's it's not really a huge con. It's not a deal breaker. Because if you use common sense with the fucking tank and don't just leave it sitting on its fucking side, you're not gonna have that problem. But a lot of RTAs left on their side will fucking leak eventually. Okay. So yeah. I mean own that for what it is. I do have one little con, and this does happen from time to time because mass production is a bitch, okay? Um, one little con, sorry, I just want to put all this shit back in a box so I don't lose anything. One little con is that mine actually came missing a screw in the deck. That's not a big deal. They send extras, but that's a bit of a quality control problem for me that I, I just have a little bit of a problem with, you know? I mean, it's one of those... If you're going to send your device out, and I, I swear to God, me and this mic are just not getting along tonight. But if you're going to send a product out, you know, you need to make sure that all the shit's in the box. You know, quality control. See, yeah, me and the mic. Just quality control. You know, how how bad is it just to verify that all the screws are in the deck? You know, so it's just a little bit of a hiccup for me. A little bit of a hiccup. Not a huge deal, because like I said, they send extras. It's just kind of one of those, oh, really? something to mention okay where there's one i always say it guys where there's one there's potentially more <sighs> pros to this tank like i said you build it the same there's no fucking need to change the way that you do things with the v1 to the v2 there just isn't in any fucking way aside from the wicking is that much more self-explanatory. So if you've had problems wicking the V1 and traded it or sold it or did whatever the fuck you did, there's absolutely no need to worry about this one. This one is so much more self-explanatory by just putting in the little juice well for the wicking. Okay. It just is. It is that much more self-explanatory. It's not just lay your cotton and spread it and make sure it's covering a fucking wicking port. But now there's actually a space, a defined space for the wicking to go. So you build and place your coils the same damn way that you would with the original Titan. But now you have a defined space to put your cotton. Beautiful, beautiful, tiny little, tiny little finesse things like that that make all the difference in the world. Okay. They really, really do. Um... Another pro, larger capacity. You guys know me, man. Big ass tanks, big ass tanks, big ass tanks. I love big tanks and I cannot lie. I love the fact that the Titan is a 28 mil tank. I love the fact that the Titan V2 is a 32 mil tank, but it's still 41 millimeters and it's like two millimeters taller. So you, you're not costing me by having some even more gigantic tank by giving me that extra four mils. Two, two millimeters for four mils of juice, that's a massive hell yes on the trade-off. Hell yeah. The two biggest pros for me. Hands down, the airflow and the flavor. Hands fucking down. The airflow and the flavor. The airflow is smooth as hell. Like, not to say that the Titan V1 is not, okay? Because it is. Thank <sighs> you. 
And yeah, if you hear that popping, my, my usual phrasing that I tell everybody and anybody that knows that has talked to me about this can confirm this. The way I tell people, you know, you got a Titan or pretty much any Steam Crave product wicked properly is if it sounds like a wet popcorn maker. Get that weird juice popping sound. It means you're getting flavor. It means you're getting good wicking. So yeah, if you don't get that, you're not going to get your optimal flavor out of it, out of any of their tanks. I fucking promise. Um, but I can tell you this. Uh, this thing, the airflow is buttery smooth. Okay, I mean, it's it's wonderful. It... I literally thought it was actually going to be worse than a Rome Modular Plus V2. I really did. And I don't dislike that airflow. I don't dislike the Ragnar airflow at all. I don't dislike the Steam Crave uh, Supreme V3. Okay, I don't. But I just had a, I had this strange feeling that making the airflow that large might cause problems. And it don't. It don't at all. <laughs> it's actually better than all the rest of them. Minus the fact that the Ragnar does have a bottom airflow option, which, in my opinion, does make it a better flavor tank. Um, <clears throat> but do I think that this is honestly just an amazeballs tank? Yes. Yes. The flavor on this does beat the original Titan. Now, I know that there's going to be people that question me. Does it beat the Ragnar? No. No, not in my opinion. Is it an amazing fucking tank, especially... See, this is the thing. Like, this is... You can't put this in the same class as a 25 millimeter tank or, or even something like the 31, you know, the Glass V2. You can't put this in the same category, okay? Because this is a true bottom airflow only, much more restricted vape. I mean, it's at 95 watts, for God's sakes, on a 31 millimeter tank. It's a very good flavor tank. Don't get me wrong. It's a damn good flavor tank, but it's not in the same class. It's a very, very different class. The Aromamizer, the Aromamizer series tanks are in a class all them all on their own. Okay, as far as Steam Crave products, but you can't make the comparison to let's say the Rebirth RTA or the Bulk RTA, um, or the Blotto, or I mean, shit, you name it, man. Uh, you know, the FP, any of those. Um, you, you can't make that same kind of classification simply because it's a different style. It's a different style deck. It's a different style airflow. So you have to kind of compare Steam Crave to Steam Crave. Um, from the big tank perspective, I vaped on the dump tank, the Mason dump tank, 40 millimeter, the 30 millimeter. Good tanks, not amazing. They're more for cloud chuck and less for flavor. I uh, vaped on the Voltro V1, V2, and V3. Those are kick-ass tanks. The only problem that I have with pretty much all of them is, well, okay, the V1 and the V3 is the airflow noise. The V2 has more adjustability to the airflow, so it doesn't sound so hollow. Uh, the V3 sounds really hollow, but it's got a lot of flavor. It's like the Fatality deck inside of a 35 millimeter tank. It's fucking, it's a good flavor tank. Does it compare to the Ragnar? No, not in my opinion. It's got a lot. It's got a lot more airflow than the Ragnar. So if you're looking for higher voltage, higher wattage, you know, big cloud chuck kind of wattage, then yeah, the Voltro V3 is a really good option. But if you're looking for a lot of flavor plus your cloud chucking, Ragnar is amazing because Ragnar is a ton of airflow. Okay, I mean that just tells you how much more airflow the, the Voltro V3 35 millimeter has. Um, <clears throat> and I've vaped on the uh, the V2 30 millimeter and the V3 30 millimeter. I think I think the V3 30 millimeter. I think there's two separate uh, 30 millimeters. Um, you know, and then obviously I've vaped on the Titan, the Plus, the Plus V2, the Ragnar. I mean, I've vaped on you know the trilogy is in there. Um, you know the Glass, the Glass V2. I've vaped on a lot of different big tanks, guys. And as far as how good are these tanks being a 41 millimeter tank? If you are cool with having a mod that can actually hold the fucking thing, because overhang with one of these, there's a big detrimental problem with having overhang with a Titan. And it's the fact that it's extremely top heavy because these fucking tanks are not light. I mean, they're like, you know, a quarter of the size of a Folgers can. Okay. They're a big damn tank. So if you put it on something narrow and, you know, just kind of skinny and just lopsided with a ton of overhang, you're going to have problems. 
Okay, you can you are going to potentially have knockover problems, leakage, potential glass breakage, tank damage, things like that. You want a mod that's going to accommodate the device, which is why Steam Craft came out with the Titan and the Titan V1.5. Um, Liasimo has the uh, F4, very hard to find mod. And then, of course, there are custom companies out there like uh, JD Mods and um, I think it's Billiken Mods. Um, you know, and there's other custom mod companies out there. There are there are companies out there that can accommodate devices, both LiPo and round cell, to handle this type of an Addy. But that would be my big thing, is that as long as you're okay with a device that can accommodate a tank of this size, would I recommend it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're an existing Titan user, is it worth buying the upgrade? Yes surprisingly i didn't think i was going to say yes i actually thought i was going to be bashing this thing into the ground and it's anything but i i think that this fucking tank is phenomenal i mean there's all these people talking about you know the vapors cloud trilogy 40 millimeter and i know what the trilogy 30 vapes like and it vapes amazing it really does it's a true bottom airflow tank with you know basically like that fatality style big channel airflow tank it's very smooth airflow, very good flavor. So I'm sure the 40 is probably a really good tank, but I got a big problem with the 40. And until they were, you know, kind of rectify the problem, I think that 40 is a waste of fucking time, especially for the money. It's a hundred dollar tank. Okay. hundred dollars for a fucking tank. And it's got a 10 mil capacity. Why in the fuck would you have a 40 millimeter fucking RTA with only 10 mils of juice capacity? That's ridiculous. I got a 41 with 32 mils of juice capacity. Okay, and it vapes fucking phenomenal. And it's less money. Sorry, you're not going to change my mind on that. I mean, it, it, am I saying that the Trilogy, you know, 40 millimeters is a bad tank? The Trilogy XL is a bad tank? No, I haven't touched it. I haven't vaped on it. I know Monster's got one coming. So I'm hoping to be able to try it at some point. Um... Not review it per se, but at least, you know, kind of put in a trial on it just to see what I think about it. But at the end of the day, do I think it's going to fucking, you know, it's going to beat out the overall qualities of this compared to that? No, I, I just don't. Um, But for, like I said, for existing Titan users, the two reasons why. The airflow, it's not near as noisy. And for two, the flavor. And then for three, the capacity. I know four mils doesn't sound like a lot, but steam crave tanks are some thirsty sons of bitches and four mils of juice is four mils of juice. Just like the old phrase, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, right? Well, four mils of juice is four mils of juice. And when you're literally talking about the minor size difference between the two tanks with four mils of extra juice, there's fucking tanks. There's 25 millimeter tanks that only hold four mils. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's a whole baby tank worth of juice extra for two millimeters of height. Fuck right off. No. <laughs> no. This thing is a banging ass tank. I can promise you uh, this. Barring any damage and the inability of using said device, this thing is staying in my rotation from here on out. That's how much I love this fucking tank. Just like the Supreme V3 is in my rotation. Just like the Aromizer Plus and the Aromizer Plus V2. Just like all four of my Ragnars. Just like my other three Titans and probably my other Titan, to be perfectly honest, is going to get something in it. Um, yeah. I mean, like, I've got that Guard 21. And yeah, it's got overhang. You know what? It really does. It's got about two, mils over, two millimeters of overhang on each side. Don't give a fuck. And for anybody who's going to ask, it's a good mod. That's all I'm going to say. Suck my mod and Vanny Vape did a good job with that one. It's lightweight, does feel a little cheap, but it's a good mod. If you're going for a lot of capacity, a lot of flavor, and familiarity, plus now, ease of build and wick, Titan V2. It's just fucking killer. That's the best I got. So yeah, longer review, but it is what it is, guys. At the end of the day, um... I want to thank you very much for watching this video. As always, I do know that your time is money, and I thank you so very much for spending it with me. Y'all have a good one.